So James, we're in the back garden of a beautiful house with lovely woodland right there and it's all gorgeous but I can hear a bit of building noise going on in the background. I mean this, we're on a building site effectively but this is, they really look different. These houses, there's so much development around here yeah. in this area and all over the country but your houses do stand out which is why we've come to see you today. So can you tell us what it is about Springfield Meadows that is different? First and foremost, we think this is the most sustainable site in the country at the moment, certainly private development. Right. We've got a number of features that, that sort of set us apart from the rest. Um, so we're working with uh, a charity called Bioregional who have a framework called One Planet Living. And that's a 10 point framework based around health and happiness and, and living. It encompasses things like carbon, uh, equality, transport links, that kind of thing. So they're really woven into the fabric of the site um, and we develop the site based on those frameworks. So we use PVs on the roof. Um, most people know them as solar panels. Right. Um, we've got triple glazed windows and a beyond build system, which makes the house um, incredibly thermally efficient. And they're actually built to the passive house standard. Right. So these are actually better than passive houses. And we have uh, an MVHR system in, in them, which is uh, mechanical ventilation with heat recovery. Wow. So it makes them a really comfortable um, house to live in because the air, you get fresh air pumped in. Um, it goes through a heat exchange. The um, stale air in the house gets pumped out and the air is filtered. Wow. So people with allergies are reporting back that, that um, their hay fever is significantly blunted because of the, the way the houses are built. So Ian, these, I mean, I'm just really blown away by what, I, what I've seen here today so far. It just look like beautiful houses anyway, regardless mm. of all the other technology. But there's some bits I don't fully understand about the, the building process. So the term zero embodied carbon, can you explain that for the, for the lay person? Well, first of all, embodied carbon is all the carbon emissions that come from things like quarrying materials, firing them, transporting them. So most building materials are responsible for CO2 emissions. But there's a class of building materials that come from plants like wood and hemp and wood fibre and things that actually reverse that. They, they absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they turn it into cellulose and, and that means they're locking up carbon. Right. So when we decide what we're building with we try to balance those two things out so that you've got at least as much carbon locked up in the bio-based materials as you have emitted from the high energy materials right. and that's how you can achieve zero. Right. And, and actually, we now know we can go better than zero. And then the things like the insulation then, so the walls are, are they kind of generally a timber frame construction originally when you first start putting them up? Yes, it's what's called a closed panel timber frame. So right. it's 300 millimetres or 12 inches thick and it's all filled with hemp and lime right, and wood fibre insulation. It's quite a chunky insulation. wall then, a 12, yes, a yeah. 300 millimetres is quite mm. big. Yeah. And so the materials that you're using in that insulation, they're not kind of petrochemical based fibres or something. They're, no, they're, natural no, they're all they're all natural. Right. So they lock up carbon, they're renewable, they're fast growing, um, but they're also um, not bad for the environment in any right. way, or the occupants. But then, so when you've got mm. clay tiles, I've never even thought about this at all, but you know, well the buildings with clay tiles, that's clay that's mined, that's dug up, then fired, so that's used yep. energy to make them and then transported yep. here. So that has a carbon... So that's one of the high energy materials yeah. that we offset by using the bio-based materials. Right. I mean, they are, they are beautiful. I mean, these ones are kind of quite high-end homes we hear, but is there a variety of styles of houses that you're building? There are. So we've got 33% or nine out of the 25 units are affordable. Right. So there's a combination of shared ownership and social housing. Um, and the rest of the sites are private homes. So some of them are custom built. So right. people get to choose their own layouts, uh, floor right. plans, um, choose their fittings and features, bathrooms, etc. Um, and the last few we're building out um, and selling it towards the end of the month. One Planet Living, it's a vision for a world where everybody can live happy, healthy lives within our fair share of the Earth's resources. And what we're, the way we're living at the moment, if everyone lived 
like the average European, we'd actually need three planets to right. keep us going. So one planet living's got t 10 principles. T they're, they're dead simple and they go from zero carbon through zero waste and sustainable food, sustainable water, right through to equity and the most important of all, which is health and happiness. And this is what global leaders in One Planet Living are doing, is um, they've found a way of living which is within the One Planet, and yet it's actually a better way to live. Yeah. You've, got, you've got more amenities, you've got, you're, you're in a more comfortable home. Every, everybody here has got really lovely indoor air quality, yeah. good daylighting. It's just, it's just a better way to live, and yet they're using a fraction of the resources. Right. But then what I love is that you're building the energy, the, you know, the latest technology in terms of energy generation into the building. It's, it, you know, where the solar panels are, it's set into, the, it's not like stuck on top of tiles like, well, we, like retrofitting them. Yeah, one of the advantages you've got when you build something from scratch is that uh, you can design it and the panels sit in line with the roof. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's called integrated PVs. Yeah but also it's more cost effective because you haven't got to buy the tiles that go under those right. because the, the panel itself is the waterproofing at that yeah. point. The heating system is I'm fascinated by because it's not what I, would, what I understand as heat pumps in that sense. It's, it's built into the building for a start. You don't have a big box outside that's humming. These houses are being sold as custom build. Right. So, um, so the clients have got some input and we've got one or two clients here who have insisted we do, we on do heat, have pumps. heat pumps. Right. Um, but but generally you don't need it and, and we would advise not to have it right. because these are built to the passive house standard so their heat requirement is just so low it right. doesn't justify the cost of a heat pump. Right, so, so that, that heat pump <laughs> produces too much in a sense. It produces too much, it <laughs> needs maintaining, surface servicing, it's got, it's, uh, it's got a carbon footprint in right. its own right. So the, the ideal way here is that these houses have got just direct electric heating underfloor right. And, uh, and then you've got lots of PV panels on the roof generating the energy. Right. Um, and then some of, much simpler. And some of the houses have, are built with batteries in them. Not all of them, but some of them do have batteries in them as well. Yes. Again, it's, um, it's a client choice for, for batteries. So probably 30, 40% of the houses here have got batteries. Right. But then yeah. the other one is hot water. So what, how, what, how have you done that on these houses? There's a slightly different strategy to different size houses and, and different phases, but the, the majority of them are just incredibly simple. It's a hot water tank with immersions in, and they're linked up to the PV panels that when it's generating extra electricity, it just dumps it will, that it heat will in. Dump, the, rather than put it in the grid, it will dump it into yeah. the hot water. And then the mm. cooking as well, because I was thinking, oh, well, there's no gas on the site, but then what about mm. cooking? But then all the cooking is electric as well. Cooking's electric, so either induction hobs or halogen hobs. Right. So James, one of the things we say in the, in the future, in the fullness of time in the future, it would be wonderful if people didn't own private cars and they used, private, they used electric cars as and when they need them. And that, that's like being a, like a theory for me. But suddenly I come here and I could live in one of the houses here, not own a car, but then when I needed a car, I could use one. You've actually built that into the service. Absolutely. So as part of the One Planet Living framework, um, transport's on there. So we've got some very good bus links with the bus going every 15 minutes to Oxford right. uh, or, or Swindon at the end of the road. But we've also got two uh, fully electric cars, um, which we've leased from GridServe. Um, we've got the charging points from My Energy here. Yeah. Uh, and the residents on the scheme can hire them by right. the hour or by the day. Right. So people don't need to own their own cars. Or suddenly, if they've got two cars, they can look at selling one because you've got this, you've got this, this available. And if you can book that up fairly easily and it, you can charge, and that's the other thing, because people always go, well, I've got nowhere to charge it. Well, if you're supplying the place to charge it and the, and the actual car itself. Exactly, so we've got, um, we're gonna have two cars here and two charging points, right. but all of the houses are wired up to have a charging point on right. their house as well. Right. And we would love residents to have their own electric car, um, but this is a fantastic interim. So what is the actual arrangement then? If you live in one of these houses on the estate and you want to use the car, what do you, what do you have? Is it just literally a one-off rental or can you? So we've got two cars. Um, anyone can rent the car. You don't necessarily have to live on the scheme, um, but there's an online booking system. You go in there, you've clearly registered beforehand, uh, plug in when you want to use it and it's available and charged.
so the annual cost, fuel cost then for living in one of these houses is going to be really noticeably lower than, than, than other similar sized new houses. Yes. We've got quite a range of house sizes here. So the smallest are 60 square meter, one bedroom flats, right up to 280 square meter, five bedroom houses. Right. So the, the running costs vary depending sure. on what size. Say you had exactly the same size house as this one with, with a gas boiler, just mains electricity, no solar panels, no nothing, no heat pumps or heating systems like that. How much is this a lot more than those houses or is it a rough, roughly equivalent cost? So price per square foot, they're comparable to, to normal houses. Right. Um, unfortunately, we're not at the stage yet where we can charge a premium for these houses. Right. But you will have lower energy bills yeah. um, as a result of how we build them. Yeah. Um, so in a way, very much like electric cars, even if they cost a bit more to start with, we all know running them is much, much cheaper. So. Exactly. And in terms of legislation around building in this country, I mean, is, 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 are you encouraged to do what you're doing to, to make the, the changes that you're doing to it? Really, really good question, <laughs> because I think politically we're encouraged, but in terms of legislation, no, right. we're not. The legislation allows you to build to a pretty mediocre standard. Yeah. Um, in air tightness terms here, we're probably 25 times better than the building regulations. Wow. Uh, There's one, one thing I do, because I'm slightly obsessed with sewage, just because I, I, put, I put in all my own sewer pipes at my mm. house. And I, wait, wait, are you on main sewer, main sewerage? Here? We are, right. yes. Yep. That, that's, yeah, because I mean, there is, I, I've seen one a much smaller housing development than this, but they did use reed beds, but they had mm. the space to do it. And that's kind of, yep. it's quite a no, it's, project. It's on our agenda for, for some right, projects we're looking at. The, I wanted mm. to ask you about what your plans are in the future then for, for future development. Yeah. So Green Corps has been going for seven years and we've built 50 houses. We're doing mm. 25 here at the moment. Uh, and we've learned an awful lot during that time. And, and the knowledge we gained in working out how to do zero carbon and zero energy has actually shown us that we can do better than that. We right. can lock up more carbon than we emit than you, right. and we can generate more energy than we use. So we've come up with this concept that we call climate positive. So instead of just aiming for zero, we want to be better than zero. Right. And we're looking to do 500 climate positive houses over the next five years. Wow. And that will have things like more electric car clubs, on-site sewage treatment, uh, catalysts for things in the area like food generation. There's one project we're looking at where we can put seven megawatts of PV alongside. Right. And we can make the whole neighboring village zero energy as well as the houses that we're building. So what is that? What what do you have in future for the company that's building all this? I mean, what's your what are your future plans? Have you got other sites? Lined so up? We're, we're we've got a couple of other sites lined up and plans to expand the company, right. um, and really show everyone what can be done and how you can build these houses in volume, yeah. um, in a sustainable way. Um, the problem we have is a lot of these big sites are uh, landlocked by the big developers who are hanging on to them. Right. So we're always trying to find local landowners, local farmers and, and people with plots of land to try and help us um, so we can build these beautiful um, yeah. eco houses. It's so fantastic that you've done it and you've struggled through and you've done what you're doing and it does look, I mean they are, I'm very jealous of the people who are going to live here. I think they are stunning great. houses yeah. and uh, it is a lovely edge of village location and uh, I think one of the other things that we want to show really is that uh, living in a low carbon way doesn't mean you've got to be rationed. No. It's actually a better quality of life. The houses are more comfortable, they're more healthy, there'll be access to an electric car club, therefore people won't have to have so many of their private vehicles. Thank you so much, Ian. That is really good. And I really want to congratulate you for, for achieving this because, you know, from doing the very small amount of building I know, it's hard work and you've done an amazing job. Thank it's you. Really impressive. It's hard work, but it's good fun. Yeah. These aren't just carbon neutral houses. These are carbon negative houses. They actually take out more carbon from the atmosphere than is produced building them. This is inc an incredible step forward and these are really special houses. But that's it. Until next time, if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>